get an idea for your next book. Take Ooh. a look. Take a look at this. Look, it's Ada Sithian and little oh. Tilly. That's clever. There we are. Isn't mm -hmm. that extraordinary? Now, I can that? see what you're thinking. Mm. How did you do it? Yeah. Well, here's the artist to explain himself. My favourite part of people's reactions is the expression on their faces when they first see this. There is a painting hidden under the gold of the edge of a book. It appears and vanishes as if by magic. My name is Martin Frost and I am a four-edge painter. Four-edge painting is a British art form for books. It's an image that's on the fore-edge of a book, under the gold, which can only be seen when the book is actually fanned out. I'm gonna make you a four-edge painting. So the first thing we have to do is to put it into a fan. And to hold it in position, I use a press like this one here. I'd like to paint the Royal Pavilion, which is in Brighton, which is very close to me. It is a very recognisable image. This is slow painting. A quick sketch painting like this one, I allow three to four hours. If you want to go for something very elaborate, a week, this is meticulous work. People have been decorating the book edges for a thousand years. It was only really when gilding came in that enabled us to make a painting vanish under the gold. Now you see it, now you don't. One can also have two-way doubles. I find the book one way, there's an image, and on the other side, because all pages have two sides, have another image again. Another variant is the all-edge painting. Not just the four-edge, but because a book has a top and a bottom edge as well, that too can be painted. So reasonably simple painting like this one would sell for somewhere in the region of £250. The more elaborate ones are considerably dearer. Although I'm working in watercolours, there's very little water involved in this. It's a real balancing act. Too much water and there's risk that the gold will come off. Too little water and you just won't get the paint on in the first place. I put it down light first. You just build it up, then let it dry, and then you start working over the top of that. My career in forage painting started in 1970, and over that period I have painted in the region of three and a half thousand books. My training, though, was in theatre, where I was painting backdrops. Different scale to forage painting, but the same sort of skills. I was working with a, a colleague, and he was a forage painter. My friend suggested I give it a go. I did, and I've been doing it ever since. Now, this is a critical part of the process. When you actually start painting, the mark you make is the mark you're left with. There's no going back. There have been many forage painters over the years, but unfortunately, there aren't many at the moment. As far as I know, I'm the only one who's actually painting edges in a full-time way. The Heritage Craft Association have compiled a list of endangered British crafts, and forage painting has been listed as extremely endangered. And I suppose that could make me an endangered species. I have taught well over 300 students. People enjoy trying it, but they don't seem to want to take it up as a profession. I consider myself very lucky. I have found a job that m makes me genuinely happy. I look forward to opening up a book and painting it. And once I've done it, I'm always looking forward to the next one as well. Right, I think we're done. Pleased with that. There you go, a forage painting just for the one show. Beautiful, and the very best of luck to Martin, who has been shortlisted for Maker of the Year at the Heritage Craft Association Awards, which takes place tomorrow. Good luck. Hey, what do you think of the amazing book he made for you? For, uh, what I love is it's hidden when you do it like that. Yeah, and then you see it. Surprise! It is like magic, isn't it? It's lovely. A huge thank you to Aid for joining us tonight.